I had some topology stuff I wanted to talk about. I had some analysis stuff that I wanted to talk about. Um, but I also wanted to see if people wanted to hear about grad school things that are coming up and what that looks like right now. Um, and people said that, let me see, if I just go ahead and pull this up. Pa, 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 pa. Do, 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 do. Community. Yeah, so most people said that they wanted to hear me talk about grad school things. So yeah, for me, grad school does not start until August. And so the things that are upcoming for grad school right now are more just major life transitions. And so I kind of wanted to talk about what it looks like if you're going from a full-time job to a PhD program. Um, at least from my perspective, for those of you that are not here with the context that I make math content, um, I got into a mathematics PhD program. I will be moving to Texas at the end of the month to, I guess, wait out the summer in the Texan heat to... Uh... And prior to this move, I've been working at my job in healthcare IT for about a year and a half now, a little bit over that at this point. And I'm just gonna talk about some stuff. Okay, so... The major theme for this video that is about going from a full-time job to a PhD program is that there's gonna be a lot of downsizing that's going to happen in my life. That's even in the case of being supported in grad school. So in my case, I, as I mentioned before, I work in healthcare IT and I work in sort of like the cloud hosting space of that world. Um, and so I do pretty good for someone who just got a job out of undergrad. Um, and I make enough where I don't have to necessarily worry about money at the end of the month, which is really nice. And I've been so blessed to be able to continue to do this for um, a year and oh, a little over a year and a half now. And going from that to making around a fifth of what I currently make and also having there be a giant asterisk around that where if for some reason funding is gone, that's kind of scary, uh, quite honestly. So yeah, I just, I mean, it wasn't a decision that I could just say like, oh, I enjoy math, therefore I will go to grad school. This is why I didn't go to grad school when I got accepted right out of undergrad uh, because I couldn't financially justify going into a PhD program that was gonna cost me 55 grand a year and basically put me into $300,000 of debt by the end of it. So you might ask like, what makes you think you can justify it now? And the answer to that is, well, one, I have been very frugal, even though I've been making a pretty decent amount of money, I have been able to put myself in a really good financial position by paying off the around like 30 grand in student loans that I had from undergrad. And then also on top of that, I was able to save up what I consider a, a pretty sizable emergency fund. So I feel pretty good about that stuff, even though it is a little freaky to know that I'm going to be making significantly less than I currently do. The whole point is to learn and it's kind of expected that you're not making a ton of money while in graduate school if you're not working a full-time job at the same time. And so that sort of rounds out the financial side of things, what's changing there. The other part of downsizing with those financial changes is changing my living situation. Uh, currently, I live in a actually pretty nice apartment. I live in a one bedroom apartment with a loft attached to it, which is, sort of a lot um, and I've realized over the past year of living here that it is a lot of space which is which it's been nice it gives me this space where I can film things which is essentially what my living room would be if I owned a couch um, and then <laughs> uh, I also use what is supposed to be the bedroom as a workout room and then I have my actual bedroom, which I use the loft for. When I move at the end of the month, I will be moving to a one bedroom apartment, which uh, is around 
two thirds of the size of this. So not like a huge size down, but still like pretty significant um, for the space that I'm used to. Um, but I'm actually looking forward to it. I think it will give me more opportunity to be creative with the space that I have. And I think because I just used my living room to film in, it will make it so that I don't have such a bland setup <laughs> when I do film because there will be something in the back because there's no space for there not to be something in the back. Anyway, at least at this point, that is all of like the downsizing things that have come to mind, that have come up, that I've had to do. Um, the other really stressful thing about all of those things is that I currently live in Wisconsin, which means I am getting to coordinate a cross country move in the middle of a global pandemic. <sighs> Should be fine. I will, I will be okay. It will happen, it will be over. I will continue on in the timeline. So yeah, that's most of the downsizing stuff. Um, the other thing that's going to come with the move and another big theme here is just a change in work ethic. And that's not to say like I don't do work at my job currently or that I don't try. It's the nature of the work that I will be doing is going to drastically change. So instead of being in a position where I'm kind of like constantly doing things as a response to issues that come up or like requests that are made. A lot of it is going to shift to what is common in the academic setting where you essentially have like free reign over what you're working on. And there is, you know, structured time and structured things that you should work on. The structured time being going to class and the structured things that you're working on being like assignments. And then also with grad school, you get to do things like teach and have office hours or TA and do all of that stuff, right? Um, but it's more so that I'll be doing a lot less of the responsive work and more so a lot of the, I guess like assigned, but also being that it's a PhD program and eventually that turns to research, like creative work uh, within things that I enjoy versus things where they are challenging and I have appreciated what I've done, but I haven't necessarily like been in love with my job over the past year and a half. So that covers sort of just like how the nature of my work will be changing. But in terms of like things that are specifically grad school related in my case, the big thing on the plate right now is to figure out what courses I'm gonna take. Uh, so we actually just got an email from our grad director that was like, hey, you should look at what is being offered in the fall and come up with a list of two classes that you wanna take and we can chat through it to see if that's like makes sense for you and whatnot. And then there's also a course that everyone in my program has to take that is incoming if they don't have a master's or any previous teaching experience. That is basically like a seminar on how to teach math. So the only hiccup with choosing classes that I'm running into right now is that when I visited back, I guess it was in like February, early. It was recommended to me that I try and take one of the qualifying exams when I got in just based on my past experience. For math in particular, it's usually pretty common that you don't like necessarily come in and take your qualifying exam right away. Usually there is a sequence or a few sequences that you take in particular areas and then you take a qualifying exam in that specific area of math. So in my case, it was recommended that I either take the algebra or real analysis qual. It's gonna be a weird one. Don't know if I'm gonna make videos about that because there seems to be like a curse on the internet of people pursuing their graduate degree or PhDs where they talk about their quals and how they're studying for them and then it goes horribly. So yeah, so at this point in time, that's pretty much everything that's going on with going from full-time job to grad school. And quite honestly, it's not as terrible as it was a few weeks ago when I was still trying to find an apartment and trying to figure out if I could afford certain places and the whole financial shift and evaluating if I had enough saved and 
it's you know it it was a lot two weeks ago but now i'm i'm like okay and it's gonna be fine i will survive as i said before i will continue along the timeline and uh i'll talk about it more as things happen but for now at least for the rest of this month there's not really much grad school stuff to talk about anyway if you are also starting a phd or or if you're transitioning from a full-time job to a grad school program or a PhD program like I am, you can, I don't know, tell me what you're worried about or what's going on there with you. You can do that in the comments below. Also, if you want to see these polls, um, I think I'll be doing more of them as stuff goes along and I want to know what people want to hear from me. Uh, so if you want to see these, you can subscribe and hit the bell and enable YouTube notifications. I think those are the three things that they say that you have to do in order to get notified of those posts. Um, usually I'll put them up and leave them up for a few days just to see what people think and then I'll continue to leave them up afterwards. But generally speaking, when I make a decision on like what content I'm gonna do, it'll usually be like two to three days after the poll is posted, at least for now, for stuff like this. Um, but yeah. If you enjoyed this video, you can give it a thumbs up. Again, if you want to see more of my stuff, uh, whether that be grad school related or you can check out all the math stuff I do on the internet, you can subscribe for more of that. As always, I am Nathan. This is Chalk, but this one was Chalkboardless, and I will see you next time.